The Leggett Podcast is sponsored by Montrex. Montrex is a cutting-edge sportswear brand empowering athletes across the world, built to enhance performance and give you confidence to go the extra mile. They've got some of the most incredible products at montrex.com. There is a link below this video. Click the link and at checkout, enter the code LEGIT for 15% off your order. That's L-E-G-I-T, all one word. Everything from jackets, cargo pants, gym tops, t-shirts, uh, running jackets, running pants. Everything is on their website and they sponsor some of the most incredible athletes. Everything from UFC fighter Leon Edwards and a good friend of the podcast, uh, boxer Jazza Dickens. So click the link below, use the code LEGIT at checkout for 15% off your order. Hi, welcome to the Lego Podcast. It's me, Jordan Neal. It's me, Andy Grant. And this week's guest is Jose Baxter. Oh, thanks, lads. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for having me on. Boss, lad, made up, lad. We've, um, we've been mates on social media, haven't we, yeah. for a while now, mate, and spoke yeah. about it. So good to uh, finally get you on. Before we get going, massive thanks to Monterex. They're our sponsors. If you want any Monterex gear, get to the website, type in Lego at checkout. You get 15% off. It's boss gear. Liverpool company support the lads and yeah it's decent gear yeah mate um, where we start obviously like it's the it's the normal one how did you sort of get into footy because I see you sign for Everton at like 6 or something yeah that's right Early yeah um, can I just say as well before you answer mate in the taxi in the taxi coming <laughs> in then uh, I, w- I was talking on the phone and obviously said yeah. I was seeing you and like even now like yeah. Taxi driver. Oh, lad, I remember him. It's, just, <laughs> yeah. it's mad. Yeah, to, like, yeah. do you know what I mean? You still, you still do. Uh, I think it was the buzz uh, around that age, and uh, they love to see one of their own come through. So you still get that a little bit. But in terms of going back to your question, at six, um, I was playing for like a local team. They were called Clegs at the time. We were now boot up, and uh, I was playing for them and got picked up by Liverpool and Everton um, at, at six and. It was only Sunday, funny enough, it's mad that I'm doing this. That was only Sunday that the the scout part and Waldron told me the story in terms of how he, he picked me up from his side because I knew I got picked up, but I never, ever knew the ins and outs of it. And yeah. Yeah, I was at a christening on Sunday and funny enough, he told me, he said um, he got he got out the car to go and watch the, the kids' footy and uh, he said seen some kids score a goal. He said it was a bit of an all right goal, so by the time he's working his way round to me, dad had scored another two, he said. <laughs> and uh, he said, he just he said to me, dad, we'll, we'll just keep him here till he's 14. Um, and that was when I was six. It's he crazy, said, isn't it? Like, yeah. six. That we've, we had uh, Ian Barrigan on, he's a coach scout for the pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was saying to him, like, how do you know at yeah, six? Yeah. And he was like, you, you just know. Yeah, well, well, funny enough, he said the first time, this was what would have been 23 years ago. He said the first time he met Bill Kenwright was that night after watching me. He was going for a meeting with the scouts and Bill. And he turned around to Bill and said, I've got you on, you're playing our first team. And it was me who he'd seen that day. That's he said, long term, um, I'm not sure if he'll be fast enough, which he was right about. That as well. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, at six he called it Martin, yeah. As you're growing up from six, seven, eight, nine, ten, did you kind of know with the other kids that you were better than them? Um, I'd, I always like was top goal scorer and I was always a striker back then. Uh, it wasn't until about 12, 13, I'd say, where I thought, right, I've, I've got a real chance here. Because, like, 13, 14, I started going with the 18s, 23s, a 15, and then first team round 15, playing up a year at England and stuff at 15. So I, I, I had the idea then. You captained England as well, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, a few age groups, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's all great that, but it must be like I know you're probably naive at that point, but it must be tough. Do you know what I mean? Like you know, playing up physically, mm-hmm. sort of just dealing with all that. You're only a kid. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, I think looking looking back, I missed a little bit of growing up me. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. R- probably the reality of life a little bit. Um, Fifteen started got and touching sixteen, I was in changing rooms with massive characters, multi multi millionaires. I'm just being dragged out of a school in Bootle and it was like looking back I probably did miss you know growing up with lads of my own age because from there I was just always with older lads then and sort of thought I was a bit invincible and was a bit of a dickhead to be honest as a young age so yeah probably it's such an me. important like forming years of your life in it do you know what I mean like you know it's all it's easy for us to all look back now but 
you sort of make your mistakes then on yeah. like but like you're in a pressured situation from yeah. a very very young age yeah i remember like at, at 15 and that you never ever like i'd never picked up a newspaper me and remember going into finch farm and i'd just played the pre-season game and scored for the first team against not forest and uh, we went in the next day and i was having a cup of tea or whatever my breakfast and at the back of the newspaper was like straight away comparing me to rooney and i was thinking i just don't need that no <laughs> i don't need to be compared to him after like one little i just about had a bowl of soup at the first day <laughs> let, alone, let alone do what he's done and like he, he was a, a hero of mine and, that. Mm. and like i was thinking oh no please like just give me a chance to try and play a little bit more yeah. so when you're like 16 15 16 are the coaches not telling you like you know you're gonna play in the first team it's gonna be this it's you know you're, you're going um, these places no you know what I'm, see more now that I've I've retired and I've stopped playing and I speak to them people um, they tell me more now than, than maybe what they should have told me at, at the time in terms of like other teams and you know what what we could have done for you and this that the other but they never really they never really put that pressure on and said you're going to play in the first team and that it was just I can always remember my younger days at Everton going through it was like just fun and the best days of my life with no pressure and then obviously 15, 16 you start playing 23s for points and went out on loan to Tamir and that's when you re- really see it in terms of like you know there's lads who are playing for the the wage packet month to month and mm. if you lose a game and their bonus doesn't come in they want to know who's give the goal away and do you, you want to grab people by the scruff of the neck and that's, that, that's real football mm. How are you coping with that football pressure and also you know like me being from Bootle yeah. it's mm. you know I always laugh when I, when I join the military and stuff and you go around and you talk about Bootle it's one of the most deprived yeah, areas yeah, in the UK yeah, yeah. but like I always think it was home for me and I loved it but yeah. But it's, I think, to anyone who's not from Bootle or outside of the pool, you know, it is quite a uh, rough yeah, place to yeah, go. Yeah, a lot of people say that rough, uh, Bootle's rough, and then I think it's not. And then I think of all the times where I've had sirens when I've tried to get a seat, and think, you know what, maybe you're right. It's normal. Yeah, but you probably tell them, they're shouting out the windows to the lads to come and. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, the, in terms of the football pressure there, where you said with Jordan, but then you've got this kind of tag on you, this lad from Jose yeah. Bootle, lad, he's going to be the next big thing, and you've got people around you I mean how do you cope with that as well it, it was hard and you, I, like I'm never I hate like trying to like put blame on anyone else because everything I've ever done wrong is is my fault that you know I, I wouldn't have it was me who's, who's done them mistakes so you can't blame anyone else they might be little knock on effects but at the end of the day you've made the mistakes but it, it was tough I went from like getting a pound a day in school I was on our dinners me and like getting a pound a day to get yourself a drink and like some of my mates who are a little bit better off were like going to chippy and that or getting sweets and you sometimes sometimes you're thinking, oh, it's one of the pack of crisp and a chocolate bar, but I was always on hot dinners and then went from that to like sort of four or five months later, being on like four and a half grand a week or something at Everton. And like <laughs> fucking now. Yeah, it it was I was sixteen. Sixteen, yeah. Four and a half yeah, grand a week. Yeah. You know, yeah. when you're given that contract, mm-hmm. are you sort of, like, given guidance or, you know, are people put round you or are you mm-hmm. just given four and a half grand a week and said, go and deal with whatever company yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. So that that was my big, like, that's one of my biggest things now looking as a coach and, and like, maybe what could have been better was, they could have said, right, you're getting four and a half grand a week, but we'll give you 300 or 500 mm. quid a week and we'll just, we'll keep hold of the rest because really at 16, you don't need nope. that. Uh, and I didn't. I was at home with my mum and dad, and I, I didn't need that. But then what comes then is like, you want the best jeans, you, can, you know, your, your mates are still 16, they ain't got jobs and that. So it's like, you got no clothes to come to town, come on, I, I'll get them. And then you go into town, and then you want a table because all these millionaires who are in the changing room with get tables, and then girls and just all stupid shit that comes with it. Like, I, I think that's, I think that's a tough. broken, like, a broken system I think because there's no 16 year old on the planet who you can give mm. that sort of money to and then expect them to go right I'm going to put mm. a grand away for yeah. maybe a property portfolio or I'm going to put mm. a grand away for this just in case mm. it goes wrong because yeah. you just do not think like that your brain's not formed to think like that it's not and they're a lot more mature nowadays the 16 year olds mm. I'll, give, I'll give them that and clubs I've got things like that better in place um, 
But this was 13, 13, 14 years ago when four and a half grand was was massive money. Nowadays, mm. there's kids in reserves who like don't get near the first team and that who were on that. Where money and the games just just gone like that. But at the time, it was it, it was quite big and. That was coming in every month, so you were thinking. I started gambling. I was thinking, oh, I'll just have it again in four weeks. That like that money will come again in four weeks, mm-hmm. and this goes like that. And I was in a bubble and thought it was invincible. And I, honestly, I was an absolute. Excuse me, French, but I was a wanker. Honest, I was. Now, we had um, Adam Morgan on. We yeah. played for Liverpool, and he, he kind of said that. Not similar, but this kind of thing of, you know, when you're that age, you know, you can get a decent car. Yeah. And he kind of said, you know, it wasn't me kind of going out there, but yeah. at the same time, I've got a nice car. Yeah. There are birds throwing themselves yeah. at me yeah. and I can go out. So yeah. it, I don't I don't care who you yeah. are. You're not going to yeah. go and go down that route. Yeah. You know, it, it takes someone very unique to yeah. to go, actually, you know what? No, I'm going to yeah. save 99% of it and I'm only going to do this yeah. and I'm only going to buy that. Yeah. It, it's not going to happen, is it? It's even it, if people tell you, isn't it, I guess, mm. because if someone come up to you at that point, yeah. you know, in your own words, you probably weren't the person yeah. you are now and said, you know, Jose, maybe do this. It's, yeah. it's my fucking money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, um, yeah, you're right. Uh, you, you, you do say that and you're, I, I had a massive chip on my shoulder. My, like, Looking back, and everyone can can agree with me. Your your best critics probably your your family, your man and dad. And mm-hmm. she was like, "Don't go there with them. Keep that money." And you'd be like, "What's my money? I go wherever I want." I was just like in that that circle of like a bubble where I thought like, "No, I'm mm-hmm. I'm this and I'm that." And looking back, like everything she said was spot on. Was it your mum and dad who tried to kind of? It wasn't. No, it wasn't like really my mum and dad who were trying to like nail me down but like I'd never I, I honestly like even though, even though I've failed the drug test and that and like it sounds like I'm lying I was never one who was out Monday to Friday and I was never one who fucked training off I, I always like train my socks off and any manager will tell you that but like come after a game or come after training when I'd finished training at 12 o'clock and then all my mates would be in the cafe and then go over the betty I'd be like well I've got nothing else to do mm. and like the only mates who were available to go to the cafe were probably the wrong ones and but you you were going there and then start like didn't know how to write a bet out but you, you soon learn and before you know it you're doing lucky 15s with your eyes closed and that, that was just that was just the norm then after the game you, you you'd like to go out whether it was for a meal but then a meal leads to a, a glass of wine and you, you're out I think as well mate I've I think so many, just from my experience, and obviously I know a few footballers and boxers and stuff in the city, and I think an injured soldier has got so much in common with a retired professional sportsman in the sense that when I got blown up, I was, I'm was i medically discharged. It meant I got pensioned off. Now, again, it wasn't millions, yeah. but it was enough, like a bit like yeah. you said, where you knew whatever I'd done this month, yeah. I knew I was getting that at the end yeah. of the month. Mm-hmm. And I got a bit of compensation, which was enough to get me on the property ladder. But then you get the free time yeah. while all your mates are working, mm-hmm. and the way you've just described it, it's yeah. exactly the same as kind of my life, but maybe to a lesser standard, if you like. Mm-hmm. And I can completely understand, mate, how you can go. I used to do it on a Sunday. I'd go for a bevy, and then on a Monday, everyone gets that point Sunday night, yeah. and everyone's got work yeah, the next yeah. day. And I'm like, well, I fucking haven't. Yeah. So yeah. so yeah, you're so out longer, yeah. and you wake up Monday morning. I'm gonna go to work. So you go to the cafe mm-hmm. or the gym, and then the cafe, and then it's like, well, what else, what am I gonna do yeah, now? Yeah. Yeah. And then there's all divorce racing on, yeah. and there's no one else to go out with. Yeah, it is. So I can completely understand, mate. It's how it... boredom. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. It's boredom. And like now nowadays, and over the last few years, and that with like having a daughter, and that you don't you don't really get that them five five to ten hours of an afternoon where you're doing nothing. No. So uh, I found that's what it was. Just but just boredom. Finishing at twelve o'clock, but looking back, I should have. I was at Finch Farm, probably one of the best facilities in the UK. Like, I should have been in the gym then mm. for two hours and then practicing, you know, free kicks or something for half an hour. Um, that's that, that's what I should have done. But young, naive, and sh- like I said, I was a dick. They say youth is wasted oh. on the young, don't they? Do you yeah. know what I mean? It really is. Like, yeah. you had your mindset now. Yeah. You'd be like, right, I'll finish the scene, get a yeah. massage, and then I'm back, yeah. back on back it. Out. I, I guess in a mad way, although you're probably seen as really high up socially. Mm. You know, Jose's got this money, he's plays for Everton and all that. You are crazily isolated because you're probably mm. one of, what, 10 people mm. who's, like, got sort of yeah. money like mm. you and, 
you know, freedom like you, time mm-hmm. like you. Yeah. So isolation leads to, as you say, boredom. It leads yeah. to problems, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was. And the, 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 um, the problems weren't really... In terms of spending money and all that, I, 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 like, I honestly thought that was going to last forever. And um, I really did. So, like, money and spending money and... Um, stuff like that that was that was stupid young me but then the problems didn't really come until like I'd left Everton really um, around 19, 20 that's when like the drug test happened and like sort of depressions and everything else that come with it that, that's when that happened at, at, after Everton So were you managing then to kind of the gambling and the odd going out whatever were you managing to kind of keep that under the radar from Everton like things was obviously still going well and you know Yeah you playing yeah, in the first yeah, team so. um, so yeah, I'd I'd I'd, ga- I'd gamble, um, but it w- it was never like hundreds of grand where you had to go in and hide it. It was like you might have lost your month's salary, which is astronomical money looking back. But you always thought that's coming again next month, so you weren't going in absolutely devastated as mad as that sounds. But you you were going in and. Yeah, you just you, you just get on with it when you're in a football environment, like. So I guess on the pitch though things are going well, right? You you like mm-hmm. you at the time you're the youngest player to play yeah. in the Premier League. Everyone's saying you know you're gonna go and play for England, you're gonna do this. So on the pitch you're probably really in a good place, yeah. and off the pitch you sort of you don't know whether you're coming or going. Yeah, uh, you, you, I've found in football no matter what problems I've ever had, the minute I step foot over that white line, whether it's in training. Or in a game, my problems have always just went away. Whether it's for that hour or that ninety minutes, they've always just you know gone out of my head. Um, but yeah, I, I, at the time, football was going great. Yeah, mm. it, it really was. Um, well, it was a little bit hard, hard done by in terms of I thought I could have been playing a little bit more than I should, even though I was young and I had a few like top top players who were playing every week, international players who sort of vouching that for me and sort of going in and asking why aren't I so I do think I was a little bit hard done by but not to like mm. to say that that ruined my career or anything Did, like that Was you able to have the confidence to go into the manager and say look I feel like I should be playing did you ever have those chats and did you or I, uh, I got asked that question yesterday and I never in my career went in and spoke to a manager not because I was scared or anything because I'm total opposite of that if any lad ever had anything to say it'd probably always be me but um, I just found that like I had loads of self confidence as a footballer in terms of well if you don't pick me I'll show you next game or if you bring me on sub I'll I'll show you and it's quite fortunate enough that like not many times apart from Everton and in the first team I was after that I was really ever on the bench so it's quite fortunate really but I sh- I didn't go into Moise you know uh, and I had two people who sort of done it for me without me asking or even even knowing one was after training. Uh, it was an England international went in and we, I'd done quite well in training. I had loads of training sessions where I was poor, by the way, but at this like period of time, I was really like, I was really on it, I was doing well. And uh, I think it was around 17, and he'd come in and he just threw his boots on the floor and he didn't like confront him. But like Moisey and his assistant was there, I think Fellaini was there and the lad and someone else, and he was like, why isn't he playing? Why isn't he playing? He's the best in training every day. And like, he, he didn't reply Moisey or not, and he just sort of like listened to it, but he didn't sort of like ask him. He shouted it loud for him to hear, and and, uh, and then the other one was a coach who sort of went and went in for my new contract. Sorry, on that one, though, you, you sitting there with a big smile, I'd be like, yeah. one minute. Don't tell him, lad. From now, I would have been like that. <laughs> Not me, Ed, but it's young age, and I was half embarrassed, and I never ever thought of it, because I was, I was half happy to be in and around, and I thought, well, I'm young, I'll get me chance, and I, it was only till he said that I went home, and I sort of was like, well, yeah, why aren't I? Uh, he's right, and it sort of, I don't know whether it gave me a boost as if to say, well, yeah, but I still never ever went in. And then the other one was I went in. Uh, he gave me, he offered me a two year Moisey in the office, and I went in with another coach. And uh, he he said like you go from like that four and a half, I was on to four for but for an extra two years or something like that. And I just turned and said to to the the other this other coach, do you think I deserve a a pay cut? 
and he went no he went uh, I think you've been the best player for me this year and every time you've went up with them you, you, you've you done well and uh, and then he turned around and said what's your best position and be the way I'd been when I'm from 15 up until round about 20 and I just thought oh, that's my time to go mm. Mm. When, you're that, when you're that age though have you got like do you have players looking sort of after you in terms of like you know in the changing room is these players that stick out to you are like you know really good to you yeah um, Tim Gale will be in the biggest one mm. um, Baines he was always good to me like I didn't drive and that Baines he used to like live in Formby but like bring me to to my mum's and that and drop me off and uh, but Tim yeah Tim was like trying to get me with his agent at one stage and I um, Looking back, maybe wrong decision what I made, but I went with like the same agency but with a different fella, um, and yeah, Tim Tim was like arm around me, and he was the one who sort of was half vouching for me as well, and like a little story we went away on pre-season, and I I was like fifteen, we and he knocked on my door, Tim, and at the time I hadn't signed me pro, so it was like. I had a six month white team me and a three year pro and um, I went in uh, he, he knocked on my door and was like do you fancy coming shopping I was thinking shopping white tea was like 90 quid a week. <laughs> <laughs> not the chance Can't on like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was like I'm just going to watch this film here the telly wasn't even on and uh, he's like no come on come with me so anyway he managed to managed to get me there it was in America this and uh, he walks into all like these shops and he walks into Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton shop and he's trying these man bags on. And he's like, which one, lad? So like he's got this netted one on that side and this leather one on that side. And I was like, the leather one looks better on you. And he's like, give me like ten dollars, twenty dollars, like go and get us the coffees, then we'll have a coffee. So we're having a coffee. And he comes out and he was like, You like the leather one, didn't you? And it was like a two, two and a half gram bag. Like little man bag. And uh I was like, nah, I can't take it. He's like, no, honestly, he's like, that's like a, a well done off me and one day you'll be able to do the same to an, a younger lad and, and that's wow. just the way Tim was, yeah. I've heard loads what of... What a story, like, man, I've heard lo- unbelievable. Yeah. 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 Loads of people speak really highly of him, don't they? Like, he's yeah. one of them players you don't really ever hear mm. people saying bad yeah. stuff about him, even like across the park, yeah. like Liverpool, and that, loads mm. of people have a great relationship with him. I think as well, mate, what's kind of lost in that story, because it's such an, like, an unreal story, is... Is you'd have just a 15 year old lad yeah, from Bootle yeah. who happens to be yeah. decent at footy yeah, yeah. and you've got like one of the biggest players on Merseyside yeah. doing that and like still to this day like I spoke to him this morning like I speak to him daily and he's always helped me with like moves in my career and um, when he's on like he's an ambassador for the World Cup now so when he's on he'll invite me up to his for tea and talk about whatever and he was the one like sort of saying to me, go and do mm. your badges, like go and do them. You you'll be good, honestly. Go and do them, and yeah, and he's uh, he's been like a a, a good good person. So important, that, 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 yeah. Because like really footy players in general get painted in such a bad light. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you know, every headline you see is like, oh, you know, he's out this or he's doing yeah. this. But it's good to hear, you know, a player yeah. of his stature being just a genuine. Sounds like a, just a genuine good fella. Yeah, he is. Yeah. That, that was one of the questions as well. Do you do you feel any um, bitterness towards Moyes then when he's turns around and he says to you, you know what's your best position and he's offering you a pay cut I mean no I really don't you know because look, looking at it I'm a, like as I'm a coach now he's a top top manager he had loads of big egos he just bought Fellaini for 17 million whatever it was and I couldn't play it either Fellaini for the simple reason 17 mil back then was massive money I felt like I should have been but I can understand as a coach now why he, ne- why he never played me Um but just the the fact that like he sort of asked that and I was thinking, well surely you should know. Uh scored goals all my career through through Everton. Uh with the national team sometimes and away with them. I was always a goal scorer, so I always see myself as a nine. Or it started coming into the game a bit more, a number ten where it was a, a false striker. So it was always that. Um and then I got to the thirty first of August, if I remember rightly, to come back to them and sign the contract that had been put on the table. And I just never ever went back in. Just never went back into Finch Farm. Never phoned anyone to say I wasn't. And I was just like, I don't know whether to just, just to jib it. Mm. And then sitting on the couch for a few months, probably feeling sorry for myself really. 
And then Paul Dickoff rang me at Oldham and was like, uh, is it right that you're not going back to Everton? Uh, do you want to come in? I was like, I'm not sure. So I signed... Are uh, you thinking about just spewing footy yeah, in general? Yeah, do- yeah. And so tough, was like, like, well, why? Why? It's like, it's just politics and this mm. and that. And I think once you get used to, like, sort of being at Everton, no, do you know what I mean? And, like, it's the Premier League, it's this, it's that... Mm. It must be hard to think, well, maybe I'm going to have to, yeah. you know, drop down a bit here. Yeah. Are you ready for it? Do I want to uh, do it? Do you know what? Honestly, uh, I'll, I'll be totally honest. I wanted to drop down because I always believed I'd go back up. I mm. really did want, want, want to drop down one, once I decided I wanted to stay in footy. It wasn't because of the, like, I'd left the Premier League club because actually being at the Premier League clubs is better because... If you go further down the leagues, the more big down the lads are, it's unbelievable. Mm. So, like, you've got lads who are multi-millionaires who you wouldn't even know and are the nicest people in the world. And you've got lads who are living paycheck to paycheck in League 1 and 2 who think they're bigger than these. Mm. It's, yeah. it, it's mad. mad. Yeah. It's mad, honestly. It's, it's crazy. Um, but... Um, what was I saying? Going so when Paul Dickhoff yeah. rang you? Yeah, so Dickhoff rang me, yeah. And uh, I signed a three-month deal. I said, I'll try it for three months on 10% of whatever. And it just offered me 10% it was. So I signed a three-month deal. And I enjoyed it. I was playing good footy. Uh, I was playing centre mid for them. Uh, I went and, went and scored 17, I think, in the season from centre mid. And um, after the three months, I met the owner then. And the owner come in, so it was my dad, my agent, the owner, and like a board, a, the rest of the board. And uh, he said to me, "Want to offer you a two and a half year deal on like I think it was five times more than that ten percent. I think it was two and a half grand or something in League One." And he was like, um, "But whatever you get sold for, we split fifty fifty. So like I I don't know whether you see on my Instagram I had four dreams it was like score up yeah, and play, play in a Premier League play for me a cap captain in England and I did me me, me forward one I always wanted to buy me mum a house like that was a dream from a young kid I always used to write it on on paper and say it on tapes and all that I wanted to buy an house and build me mum one next to it. it was always a dream of mine to retire me mum and dad so um. Chef United come in for me and bought me for all, like 1.3 million or something. And I was thinking, because I've got 650k here, yeah? mm. like I can, I can buy me mum a house. So I signed for Chef U, phoned the German, and he went, Nah, I didn't say it. So, what? Uh, what? He was like, I didn't say that. So I was thinking, Well, fine, because like there's, there was this fella on the board, what? Barry, he was a scouser, and like another two fellas, Neil, and I forget the other fella's name. And I used to like give them some of my boots and that because some of them were Everton fans and some of them like kids who were my favourite player at, at, at Oldham and that. So I used to give them my shirts and sometimes boots and all that and got I found got on with them quite well. So I was like, Sam, I'll just phone Barry and that. So I phoned the, like three lads who were in on a board meeting and they went, we weren't in on a board meeting. So I was like, oh, so what they so basically they now, they've signed you as like you know they know you you're a good player for League One standard yeah but they signed. wanted money for me yeah, yeah. they wanted to sign me to just to, let to sell me on because he had a plan and his plan was to build a new stand yeah which he did sell up and fuck back off to America yeah. Simon Corney his name was and obviously that one point three million goes a long way to doing what he wanted to do oh yeah 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 I think it was <sighs> half a million or something like that for the stand. I was not, and you could do to. The first brick of the stand after me, and all stupid stuff like that, as if like that would boil it over. And he didn't give me, honestly, one pence. Not even like his 5%, his 10% of it then. Not even one pence. And like, he shook me hand and looked me in the eye and said, Mm. it's 50%. So like, I'm then signing for Chef U, what should be on Cloud Nine on Boss Money mm. for a three year deal. Unbelievable club, by the way, and massive fans. And like, I was top goal scorer two years on the bounce for Chef U. Played there 18 months and like fourth highest in a decade top goal scorer. And I'll hand on out on my daughter's life. I was 40, 50% of the player of what I was. What, just because you've been mentally just beat down just, just yeah, by that? Yeah. I was overweight. Um, 
weren't myself, weren't as sharp, couldn't get going, but yet, like, still performing and, like, people still, like, me- like lad messaged me yesterday saying you mm. used to rip it up at the lane, I was thinking. Mm. I never. Because when I was looking at, like, sort of a bit of research into it, it seems like Oldham, of old, you're in very high regard, yeah. and also Chef United, yeah. like, yeah. the fans and that were just... Yeah. Loving what you were doing, and you to you to say like you weren't yeah. even you weren't yeah, even all there. Honestly, did honestly. the fans know that you've been fucked over so big? No, no, not many people do. Not many people do. That's no. the side of footy that mm. is just you know I guess there's a very small population percentage mm. of the population that ever get to see that. Yeah. But oh, that now, man, that's mm. it's it's almost fraud, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> he said he couldn't put it in writing, something to do with the PFA and the FA. You've you've got a gentleman's agreement, and you know there's other people in the room and that. And mm. Looking back, probably did that, to. that just then massively sour your taste yeah. for football then? Uh, not, not necessarily my taste for, for football, but one of my dreams of just being ripped away from my eyes in, t- mm. in terms of getting my mum that house. And I was thinking, well, am I ever going to get that chance again? Mm. And then when I was like massively confident and self confident, I started like sort of doubting myself a little bit then. Yeah. Um, will I get that opportunity again? But previous to that, when I signed for Oldham, I'd have, I'd have been like, yeah, I am getting that opportunity again. And, like, you know, that that didn't, that, that chairman didn't force me into taking no. a drug, but, like, mm. there was, it was a little bit of a domino effect, yeah. yeah. I think once you sort of commit to something mentally that's so emotional to us all, mm-hmm. you know, buying your mum a house mm-hmm. is something that everyone would love to do. Mm-hmm. I think once someone... It's not yourself who's messed it up. Someone's took that away. They dangled the carrot as well, haven't they? Said your what you've planned to do is not happening because I say it's not happening, Mm. and that's very tough, very very tough to do. I'm not saying, and I don't agree that you know Mm. someone made you take drugs or whatever, but there is somewhere the slippery slope does start, you know what I mean? And it could have been that me. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that move then, then you go to to chef you, then you're saying you're fifty percent of the player, is that? Then just that knock-on effect, then the drugs, then yeah. starts and just. So I I I never ever took a drug in my life previous to this, and I used to like see my mates doing it and be like, hey, and like give them loads and all that. Uh, I went down to London, and had half a tablet, and still to this day don't know why, like don't know don't even know why I did or why I tried it or what. So I um, went into training on the Monday and I'd, so, so I'd never took a drug in my life and never been drug tested in my life. So took a half a tablet on the Saturday and come Monday was my first ever drug test and fa- I obviously failed it, yeah. Did you know when you walked in? That- when they walked in, I knew, yeah. Mm. Like, I had this like warm, like horrible feeling, yeah. yeah. Um, I'd done the drug test. And it's a weird one because you don't get the results for like three to four weeks. Mm. So like, if it happens, they then do a second test just to make sure and all that. So in that meantime, you're thinking, I'm all right here. Mm. And then bang the news. And um, it was just semi, semi-final of uh, the playoffs. Nigel Clough phoned me, said, can you come in early? And I thought, I fucking hope he's not going to drop me. And... Uh, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, no, it's for that. Mm. And he uh, got there and he just said, listen, I'm going to have to tell the fans you're sick and so we know what's going on and that. And I had this letter off the FA and stuff. And then that was the start of a process then when I had to start getting my story. And looking back, I wish I was, was just honest and just said, listen, I, t- I tried the drug, don't know why. Because the sort of... I said I've been spiked and I've probably heard that story one million times before. And then second time, when I never took a drug, it was like, well, we let you off with the first one, we're going to fucking slam you for the second one. Now, where have just, just being honest, maybe it would have been a bit of a, a lesser. Mm. So when you get popped the first time, mm. are, are you not honest about it? Do you say that? Yeah, as you said, I got, I got, I got spiked. Mm. Um, and then, like, looking back, she's then saying, well, didn't you feel weird or, and stuff like that? And it was at Wembley and, and like, then I'm thinking in the back of my hand, well, yeah, maybe I should have felt weird. And, like, you just you start lying. Yeah. Um, which I found, like, as, as a younger lad, even all the stupid stuff I was telling you as I was doing, I was probably just what I was, just a liar. Mm. Um, but then, then that had the sort of knock-on effect then. Um, 
and I'm not saying knock on effect for, for the second one because I'm done art, I can sit here and I never took a drug for the second one. It's mad, it's a mad story because I was sit, sitting there, I had two coffees in the camp field, on, in Anfield, the camp people, and I was watching a game on a Sunday. I had two coffees and the woman gave me them in a mug, I said, fill that back before us, other way drinking. Went outside to use my phone, come back in, and the lad I was with at the time, his mate had come and he went to our lad and gave me a vodka, lemonade, and black currant. And I had, honest to God, I had one mouthful of it. The match had finished, I was going to get off, went home and all that. Sat on the couch for a bit, spoke to my man, and dad, went to bed and drove in the next day with Jay McEverly. Drug tested to come in because I was on high alert then. Mm. So they come in, I knew I was on high alert, so I'd have been an absolute fool to take something. Uh, they used to come and knock at my house and all that by this time and they were allowed to home visit me so at any stage they wouldn't like ring you up and say we're coming tomorrow it'd be like half ten we're here um, I never ever ever in my life thought that there'd have been a trace of a drug in, in my system ever and he was he said there was a small trace of cocaine in, in, in my system and I was thinking impossible so I was like well what can I do to prove that I haven't because I really haven't and then like they're probably thinking well first time you said you haven't so then mm-hmm. they said well we can take hair follicles so they come to me put me. I had a place in Sheffield come to me place and cut two big chunks of hair out the back of my head and I was saying like take me blood as well I wanted everything and uh, the hair follicles come back clear so I was like perfect told you and they went nah like we're, st- we're still going to slam you because that's twice your time What's the time frame from getting popped the first time? Do you get a ban after that first no, time? No, first so, time was a six month warning. Okay. So like, if I'd done anything in the six months, mm. I was to get a further ban and that was in the six Within months. Within the six yeah. months? Yeah. How, how was your football going on after that? I mean, so they get blown under the court, like the fans didn't know anything and no stuff? No fans and didn't know, so... Football carried on like normal and... Football, yeah, yeah. Football was was normal. Um, I was getting offered a new three-year contract on like double the money, which like I was already on a boss contract and in League One it was fucking astronomical. It was well bigger than my first contract at Everton and that. So like I, I was play, playing good stuff. Some teams were interested and higher up and it, it, it was all good, yeah. Everything was good. And then um, that happened. I went there and was in the courtroom, it was like a courtroom, it was in one of the boxes at, at Wembley and there was like a guy there and he was sort of saying, I've got a lad the same age, you know, these stuff do happen when you go out and sort of like, he was should have been against me but he was like half being all right and then there was a woman on my side who I thought was like for me and she stood up and was like, he's a danger to society, he's a danger to football and I was looking at her thinking, fucking hell, like I'm, I'm not and then I, I had a fella here I had to go and see people from like sport and chance and that. And he was like a doctorish fella. And he threw me out after 20 minutes. He was like, You are not a drug user. And I like checked my teeth, my eyes, everything. Like, I was like, you, like Go. She'll be here for two hours, but go. You, you know. And like, like I, I went. I really, really was. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing they're seeing some, some lads who were yeah. crazy Charlie yeah, heads who yeah. were like, you know, and yeah. obviously if you've come in yeah. and they're like, clearly yeah. you're so not. Been a two hour so what do you think what do you think happened then at that pub? Do you think do you think I, I, it's I, something I sinister have, or do you think it's yeah, just a day? I have my views. I have my own views, yeah. Uh, I'd never ever share them in case my views were wrong. Mm. But yeah, I, I have my own views, yeah. I think that like sort of guessing what you're getting at is when you're a footballer, do you think there's certain people not after you but people yeah, around you think you know this guy what do you think as well because it sometimes frustrates me a bit the way that people go ah oh, you know scouses everyone's got your back it's such mm. a lovely city and, and in many ways it is and we do yeah. stick together for a lot yeah. of things but I've also seen people are fucking people want you to do yeah. well but just not too well yeah 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 I agree like fucking under out of 100% of the stupid shit that I've done over all the years and you know whether that's being gambling lying fucking relationships being horrible whatever um, I think you know a good 60-70% of it's true but like 30% of it I hear stories and that and I'm like what the fuck like I've had like the baby's mum have a text or a call saying I was out pouring a girl a glass of champagne I was in bed with it no, like stupid shit like that I had a room and that I was in a pool party and my mates a couple of weeks ago with loads of girls I've never had a drink in my mates house in his life who he lives there with his wife and that it's 
it's insane some of the stories but um I'd, I'd say when i was younger certainly more so now mm. i literally don't move outside the front door so there's I mean, definitely no stories coming mm. now at mm. 29 you know obviously you've got a family and stuff yeah. like it's easier for you to say that like you mm. know i'm i'm not gonna i understand who i'm yeah. around and stuff like that but so when you're even at Chef United, when you maybe what are you twenty five, twenty six? Are you still around yeah, people? You no, probably she when I was at Chef. Yeah, I was twenty, twenty one. Twenty one. So you're still yeah, so ve- yeah. still very young. Still very young. You yeah. still got people around you then who you know. Have, you shouldn't have been. Shouldn't yeah. have been around yeah. you. Yeah. Um, but people who I thought were thought were mates and that, yeah. Um, and yeah, just looking back, I think maybe wasn't so much so. When you're going through the chef, you then you get the first drug, you, uh, you get away, like mm. get a six month thing. What's still going on with the gamble and stuff? Are you still doing that? Um, is, is things bit- yeah, so in Chef U, my girl at the time, who's the baby's mum, who obviously we're, we're not together, but she, she had a job up there. And um, so I'd finished training again, 12 o'clock. I had a few Scottish lads who played, played for our team, who were up there and single and stuff. So they'd be like, should we go to this place on Ecclesaw Road, um, Cafe Marco? Should we go to Cafe Marco? And then you're sitting in Cafe Marco, it's like, they have fun at Lingfield's going in them, and then before you know it, you walk around and you have a little gamble there. And I always remember a guy, I forget his name, but he worked on the counter in the Labrooks, and he, he was sound, he was a, he was a Chef U fan. And uh, he, he was just a dead, dead nice fella. He was made up to be there, and we were half like made up that it was someone who we could trust a little bit he wouldn't be running back saying these are spending all types of dough and all that so um, yeah it, it, the gambling was probably still going on there yeah. Yeah. it's mad like it just seems like a reoccurring theme throughout your career like mm-hmm. you know your fo- when your footy's going really well you know things yeah. off the pitch maybe not so yeah. when does like the you know by your own admission like the depression and that start to sort of when do you start to understand that you know I am low and stuff the, 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 the minute I got banned yeah mm. so I, I used to go to the, um, again on Ecclesaw Road this Marks and Spencers and I walked in there and Sheffield is a little bit like Liverpool they've got two teams they love one they hate the other and it's a city where like it's like that you, you can't do much and, uh, and get away with it so I um, sort of knew a few people in there just through, through shopping there and speaking about the game and that and uh, at this time it was out it was out there a bit that like I weren't playing and failed the drug test and whatever. So I thought I'll go to that woman over there. Uh, so I had me shopping and walked over, I had me hood up and all that. And uh, scanned all my stuff, got to the end paid and I was thinking, Oh thank God. I get me I just didn't want to be seen by anyone. And she went, Oh, by the way, love and I was like, Yeah, she went, I've had to tell my son his favourite player's been a naughty boy and it just crushed me, lad. Crushed me when home mum was like and she was in work and at the time I was like fucking looking at the belt on my jeans and I think it was better to just not be here you know stuff like that and then um, I got the ban and the ban was like fucking he was talking and talking and talking like the fucking 27th of May like it weren't that day but like mm-hmm. this this was all I could hear and it was like it was like, everything was a blur and it was like fucking 2000 and blah blah I was like two and a half years down the road I was like what um, if you're to be seen training with another team you'll be banned for life and I was like so I had like I knew I was getting a ban at Portsmouth Tramier and someone else at the time saying we'll come and train with us and we'll still pay you to like sort of lift the intensity of training up a little bit and that and like I was thinking well that'll sort of keep me fit and keep me in and around and keep paying the bills and that and Never two and a half years, no pay, and um, couldn't say him in a football club. So for that, for the next four or five months, I was in my mum's room, top floor, just fucking depressed as anything. So you just like obviously, you know, it's not something we all. I hope mm. I never go through myself. Yeah. But you genuinely thinking, you know, is it better if I'm, yeah, no, if yeah, I'm yeah. not here? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's mm. such a just, at that age. Looking think. back, I just didn't have the balls to do it. Didn't have the balls to do it. Are you speaking to anyone about it or? No, I met, I met a fella, Jamie Edwards, who I think was really good at that time for me, really good. Um, and he met me in a hotel in Sheffield and just got me to talk a little bit. And within ten minutes, I was in floods of tears, and like there wasn't wasn't that much left of my coffee. It was a tiny bit of my coffee, and he made me hold it. And like as he's talking, I was like, and he's like, no, no, keep hold of it. So I was like, my fucking arm's aching. <laughs> so he said, well, see that little bit of coffee? 
so if you hold on to it for long enough it becomes heavy it's like that's the same thing with stuff that you're not talking about in your head and then since then I've started like sort of opening up more and speaking to people and you know sometimes you don't want to go and speak to your girl at the time or your mum and dad because you don't want them worrying and mm-hmm. stuff and mm-hmm. especially in footy you go in and speak to the lads it looks like you're weak you speak to the manager it looks like well he's not going to play me now and how am I going to get back up there where I want to go if I'm showing weakness and uh, there's a lot it's a lot better now in this day and age because a lot more people are coming out and talking about it which is great but yeah Spash spoke to him for a little bit and then sort of he, he helped me out to be fair and then uh, when it started to come to start paying him and I weren't getting any money he was like looking six ton an hour I was thinking Jamie thanks but <laughs> honestly no I'm all right now so for them like uh, sorry mate for like so two and a half years then you know your band's in footy's no longer an option mm-hmm. I know you're saying you're depressed and then you're coming out of it are you literally not earning money no. through anything no I had uh, two I had a property in Wal- Brown Walton area which I like I ended up selling for fucking half of what it was worth stupidly just to just to get money in and um, it was the baby's mum's like 30th and all that and she would never ever like a money person and that but like I wanted to get away a little bit and sort of get away from everything that had just happened and stuff and then yeah um, we weren't earning and I, I was paying a certain amount like a lot over on the house so like by the time my contract had finished at Chef U my um, my house was paid for then that house that I was just renting it out because I was living in Sheffield but I, I wanted to like pay I was paying like 3200 quid a month but on like a house that was 600 quid a month but just to get it paid off so like come 22 I, I had like a mortgage free house there and I was like right on to the next one um, and then when I sold it it was like payments were coming out for the 3200 quid one and stuff like that so uh, went rather quick and then she was working so I found myself like if I ever went for a meal and like I went to put my jeans on she'd like slid 150 quid in my pocket and no stuff like that and like embarrassing to say but like it, it, it half it half got, got me to, well it did get me through but like found that like I was always from a young age the bread in and I always wanted mm. my mum and dad not to work I wanted <coughs> my partner not to work and that, that was just the type of person I I didn't want anyone like with the stress of work I thought if I'm in a position like no one around me my mates and that like you ain't worrying about money I've got some and, and like it was went, went from that and like not letting like your girl buy a pack of chewies to like air slide money in your pocket because mm. she was in work was then people in still Madison. around you like the lad you no at this point like the lad you're buying clothes for the lad you're taking <clears> out and stuff like that no no so they're not uh, there to sort of help you when no, you no I have like Oh, I was to finish training and have like fucking 50 missed calls well, not 50 missed calls 50 messages or something four missed calls like honestly I reckon I've got like four four mates yeah which I'm totally happy about by the mm. way yeah I think that's another thing that you, you yeah. learn with age isn't mm. it sort of mm. the right people around you but mate, I, that, that kind of thing when your world falls out mate I mm. just mentioned that a few times but when I was going through my dark period mate I was gambling and drinking I remember I'd done a motivational talk yeah. got like a standing ovation on 700 people everyone's like wow you know yeah. you're a hero you're this and that and I um, I think I just got banned driving for six months or something got in a taxi and um, like my missus at the time was leaving me yeah. um, and I was gambling and it's like cried in the back of this taxi yeah. mm-hmm. and like 10 minutes before people are like yeah. wow you're, you know, you're amazing and all that and like the embarrassments of and again I was like you and I, I, I went as far as thinking I want this to end, but I remember um, I remember I'd, I'd give the bed uh, like to my ex missus. Yeah. So, so like I had like in a, a converted garage, it was just like a single bed where the yeah. dog used to sleep, yeah. and I was sleeping on this in the garage. Yeah. And my dad come round and was like, "What the f- what the fuck are you doing?" Like, mm-hmm. like never had a bed. Yeah. But yeah. then on the face of it, everyone's like, "Wow, wow, you are such an inspiration." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And but my whole life was just. Yeah. Gone to shit. Society yeah. coming up because we all... don't. They, mm. People don't see that. They, they really don't. It's been many a times where like you'd be out of a day with the lads and go to the gym and then go home and cry your leg off like. 
mm. people don't see it and and but back then I probably didn't want people to see it mm. I yeah. could literally cry my leg off, lad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Never got blown up Lord, across the room. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do love a good cry, though. Yeah. Oh, lad, I'm fucking mm. saying to you yesterday, yeah. lad, I cry yeah. all the time, yeah. lad. And I just think, lad, it, it's it's very brave, you know, lad, because again, like you say, you go from the time where you've got loads of mates and people see you, but people don't see those dark yeah. moments yeah. when it's just you and you maybe haven't yeah. got that many friends yeah. it looks and you've not really got that many people you can talk to yeah. it's mm. I think it's trust, hard, isn't it? trust must have been a big thing for you though because obviously mm. when you get to Sheffield United and you know then you're struggling mm. there's that stuff that come up with like the, the, the board at Oldham and you know all that stuff are you thinking um, you know I'm not going to you know commit what? to someone else um, I've never really thought about that until I got older all, all that stuff after after me ban and then sort of went back to Everton and all that like every everything then was like sort of trying to build to get mortgages again and and like sort of living paycheck to paycheck where then boss contracts weren't really coming it was like sort of halves and thirds of of what them contracts were so at that stage it was probably sort of in in, in footy for the wrong reasons where as a kid and that I was and. Mm. And up to chef you and that I was in it for for the love of it and I loved it and then the further down you go, the standards not the best and you're not really happy and injuries started coming a lot more because I'd had two years out the game where when the minute I went back to Everton fucking had about four or five injuries in one year and like Bill Ken really Mike called you didn't he and yeah. say to bring you back that's yeah. a good story that like obviously your bands up and then Everton do yeah. give you like a, a lifeline so to speak yeah I always thought I'd get back in footy I really did but like never like that I was in that so, uh, you see uh, the show was chippy and I yeah. so, <laughs> so I, was, I was in there <laughs> and uh, I was in there with, with Cindy the baby's mum and phone goes private number and like as you whipped it out I just seen like eyes look at the phone I was thinking I've got an answer that looks like dodgy if I don't <laughs> <laughs> so I answered it and I just did um, well in the background I heard any salt and vinegar on your chin <laughs> but I heard on the phone um, it seems like we only spoke yesterday son doesn't it and I thought that's the chairman now. so I walked outside I was like chairman he was like yeah it's me and then he just said like I always wonder why you left. Like you were, you were like the blue boy for me. Uh, so I just told him like I, I wouldn't have played under the games and scored at Wembley, and I felt like I was just there to sit on the bench, chairman, and this, that, the other. And he was like, if anyone can turn your career around, I'd love to be the man to do it. So I was thinking, fucking hell, like it's going to allow me to come in pre-season train and find the club. So then I started like working with Dementia and Alzheimer's and Everton in the community every Wednesday and doing stuff there, um, just voluntary going in every, uh, every week. And then Unzi and Denise Baxendale come in and was like, Germans offered you this, it was a 12 month contract on, on all right money by the way. And I was like, fucking hell, it's broke down, cried my leg off. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was fucking, it was surreal, it was. Um, and that faith know, shown in you, lad, that's something yeah, else, that, that, isn't it? Yeah. That, that's genuine, that, mm. because, yeah. you know, you do hear a lot of things, like, from Red Side and stuff, yeah. and about Bill, Bill Kem and that, mm. but for him to ring you out of, you know, and, and give you that life, yeah. man, you must have walked back into Everton and been oh, like... I fucking skipped... No, but I never... I skipped out of the, the, the chippy of my normal, and honest to God, I never touched a bit of my meal. Uh, I was saying to, 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 to Dave and that, like, who was Cindy's dad at the time, I was like, fucking feel like I can't eat in that like I don't know whether it was excitement or butterfly saying to me mum and dad like they've offered me a 12 and like obviously they're in bits and all that like the club who've sort of give them the best years of their life Um, and like I was going back there but going back there I was nervous dead nervous and like I, I weren't a nervous kid I'd go in but like I was I get on more at Everton with like the cleaners the kit men the, the chefs and that I make sure and go round I say good morning and I will use to all them before I'll go and see a player or a coach because I find like they keep the club afloat them type of people and I've always known them by first and as a player as a coach like I always get on with them and I was wondering what would they think I was always thinking like what will Sagey the kit man and that think like me coming back here and 
I wonder what they'll think. And then, like, I know, even though I was going back to the twenty threes, like, fucking hell, first time seeing Bainesy or Seamus, like, and like, they're not like that. And like, they were mates and that, and like, welcome me with open arms. I'm like, oh, great to have you back. But I was always thinking, oh, whatever. And then I had four or five injuries, could not get going at all in the year. And like, so Bunsy was like. Honestly, he was unbelievable. Him and Denise Baxendale, I couldn't speak highly enough of, like, what, the way they welcomed me and the honest conversations we had before I went in. And, like, even still now, the way I am with him and that, like, I never say a father figure because my dad's my dad and I fucking adore my dad, but, like, he's, like, the next best thing to one. He's mm. fucking... He's being great. And Denise, like, her, her resume speaks for itself. She's an absolute powerful powerful woman but at the same time so like gentle and welcoming with it brilliant and like he he said to me at the end of the year Unzi there's another contact here for you and I was like just like how, how proud I am and that I was like Unz like standing in the way of kids dreams just cause like I'm like them as a decent player years ago uh, I couldn't do it to myself like I'd love to stay at the club forever but I need to get out and sort of play men's football and at the same time stop standing in the way of a kid's pathway because I've had my chance and I just couldn't do it and it's brave like, of you that mate yeah, it's yeah. a very very um, I, I guess mature like yeah. way of looking at things because I'm telling you now there's a lot of people who would have stayed exactly yeah. where you are yeah, and yeah. said you know yeah. fuck you you know what I mean yeah but I just couldn't I really mm. couldn't and um, as I was walking out the room him and John Eberle and Franny Jeffers said oh by the way take your coaching badges, you'll be a top coach. And I never ever thought about coaching until that day. Mm. So then you leave Everton, you go back to Oldham, but yeah. do you know at this point that maybe that you know, you're know you going to move into coaching or are you still thinking? No, no, I'm still thinking as a player then. Um, and then went to Oldham and it was a fucking, it was a bit of a shit show, like chairman and he was like getting his own people in and it's like signing lads to be spies and changing rooms to see what was going on and Really? Yeah. yeah, it was fucking like Paul Scholes come in, and like if Paul Scholes couldn't sort all them, fucking no one can because like <laughs> he's an absolute legend of the game. He's an Oldham fan, and he come in and was like, "I'm gonna try and do it my way," and said to the chairman, "And not like stay out of it." And after fucking six games, he just walked and fucked off Scholes, which tells you everything how the club was. Uh, fucking not getting paid on time and getting paid weeks late and this is what happens and where, where I'm from so like you fucking we're not where you're from like you pay us and you mm. pay us on time and then like when the lads were having meetings and shutting all the doors and saying well we'll just fucking not train for a week and and, and stand together then he would come in the next day and go he's not training for a week are you and we think how the fuck yeah, do you know we've had like fucking young lads everywhere like as as the clocky watchmans and that but it worked out it was a foreign lad who he brought in he was the eyes and ears and that's <laughs> what <laughs> well, he brought him in like w- did he, he have ability a decent to player, play by the way yeah he, he was, was he was just all, garbage he was all right, but like that's mad yeah mm. and he what he was just reporting basically he was reporting. reporting back yeah that's f- me that honestly got does that some... kind of stuff happen just at that level or does uh, it is the, is the mad stories it's probably you up here I, to I, I, about, couldn't, like, I couldn't see that happening I no. The likes of Everton and that, no chance. Um, you just think, why don't you? Like, what can mm-hmm. that chairman be? Yeah, given Game, this, yeah. no, but given this well, kid well, to do kid, that. Like, he should have been totally the other way. This kid, his chairman come in and whatever, if it was his money or not, I, I haven't got a clue. But he started giving lads in League One like five grand and six grand a week and that. So this kid was on five grand a week. They got relegated to League Two, but he was still on that money. Now the chairman said to him, "Take a three and a half grand or a three grand pay cut, so I can sign Jose Baxter." And the kid went, "Yeah, okay." And like, so he should have been totally the other way, yeah, thinking, yeah. "Fuck you," to the mm. chairman. And instead, he started being like a little snitch. That's that. <laughs> how, how long did? Because I'm, I looked at your um, mate, you, you, you career, mate, you. Bang goals everywhere. Yeah. Do you know what? Yeah. Ninety three yeah, and twenty at Sheffield United. If you're saying yeah. so, ninety three games twenty. I don't know how accurate yeah. that is, but one and four. Maybe, yeah. yeah. If you're, but if you're saying you weren't quite the player, oh, you, no, you were, you weren't committed. Yeah. That's you, mm. that probably could have been ninety three and forty really, or mm. you know. Yeah, mate. Your whole career is is, is basically yeah. a, a one and four, yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. And and the mid so so Oldham centre mid 
Chef U ended up being centre mid. Um, 93 appearances, tw- 20 goals mm. from centre mid. Do you think you were stuck between positions, personally? Um, yeah, yeah, um, I do. And especially the lower lower down I went, uh, with all due respect, I think they try and get the ball players on the ball a little bit more, so that might mean you're coming back a little bit. Mm. Um, I was never like a box-to-box midfielder. I was always like, well... Mm. He phrased it quite well, the man at the time, Nigel Atkins coming. I don't know whether you know him, managed Southampton, mm, yeah. Hall and all that, and he uh, had a few pre-season games and he got me in his office and like I walked out of there feeling 10 feet tall. It was unbelievable what he said. He said I was the best passer of the ball he's ever seen in, a, in, a, in his life and this fella had coached like when you Adam Lallana's and you Schneiderlands and all that and he said like I see you as my Tom Brady like you you set the attacks off for us so he was th- sort of the one who who would move me back and then I went to Oldham started playing like centre mid Plymouth I was like centre mid sometimes like a deep centre mid he used to play like one as a pivot and two centre mids in front and I'd be that one and then went over to America and was like a centre mid, yeah. Because it seems like your record would suggest that, especially sort of League One, maybe, you know, League Two ish, mm. you'd, have, you'd have scored goals yeah. as a striker, do you know what I yeah. mean? Mm. But yeah. obviously your ability has took you mm. further back and further away, yeah. So yeah. it's just like you're stuck between yeah, yeah. a rock and a hard yeah. place, really. Yeah. Like, what happened with, so obviously Alden, the, the shit show you say, and then obviously Ryan Lowe yeah, comes him, so. in. I spoke to Ryan this morning, actually. Yeah, yeah did you? And yeah. Ryan comes to get a bit of, bit yeah. of juice on you, know, I was like. <laughs> a bit of juice, yeah. And he was a. Uh, <laughs> You know what he said, which I thought was really nice. I said, I've got yeah. um, Jose coming on, and he went, You know what, lads? What a nice lad. Yeah. He said, And what he said was what, what you mentioned yeah. before. Like, you know, rumours go round yeah. and this and that. And I went, I'll just judge him on what yeah. I know. And he went, yeah. Never ever let me down. Yeah. Yeah. And he said that people, when you left Plymouth, he said people were going to him, Oh, why? What's he done? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Ryan was like, He's not done nothing. Yeah. He's yeah. having a bad time with injuries, yeah. and he that. Mm. he's not done nothing wrong. Yeah. And it's like people had this maybe perception yeah, of ah he's yeah, fucked up again he's, he's done this again, again and, yeah. and Ryan he, he never had a bad word to say about you. Yeah, I suppose that's just my my own fault for when I was young where people will always have that perception. Um, I had three Soleuses in the space of three months to hand in Plymouth. How did that uh, move first come about? It was so. I it was mad because I played against. I, I've known Lowy all my life. Um, Lowy's girl Jade, her brother Marco was my best mate who passed away in a car crash on down by Scotty Road, you know, uh, by the bus stop. Mm. Uh, you, you'll see the, the memorial still there oh, and stuff, yeah. yeah. So um, I've known them my whole life, and Mark, uh, Jade's dad, who's Ryan's girl's dad, and that, like, always being like close, live by the banjo, and my mum was by the Bedford, so always, always like super close and like love the family and that. And I played against a Berry is Berry team when I was at Oldham and come away from it thinking they play proper footy for for a lower league team. I, I wouldn't mind playing for Lowy. Um, and then he went to Plymouth, who were, were a massive club by the way. And I was like stuck in between going abroad or staying. And uh, my nan always used to say to me, like, you've got a guardian angel looking over it sounds mad this, but my nan used to say like, if you ever want to speak to the Guardian and go into a room on your own and just speak to it and I used to think yeah it's sound and whatever <laughs> and I went for a piss and I'm not messing I just was like spoke to this Guardian angel and asked like to get me to Plymouth I'm no word of a lie half an hour later the phone rings right now I'm not messing <laughs> on a stand on art <laughs> life's mad isn't it? and yeah. I went and met him on the bottom road I let him roll for a coffee and he said this is what we can offer you um, and come come in um, we've we've done our budget, but we'll get you in on a short contract on the basis of you know you stay long time. And uh, started off quite well. Uh, first few games we were top like top of the league, and I was playing. We were playing really good stuff. The football, him, him and Shuey, uh, like I always say, and still to this day, I reckon he's the best manager I've played for. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's a big place, that. Yeah. Really do. Um, everything like I think a big part of management is man management and yeah. understanding your players and like having a laugh but at the same time this is working mm. knowing when to have a laugh and when not to and then his sessions that him and Chewie put on I really do I'm not just saying I think 
unbelievable. He, 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 I'll be surprised if he doesn't go to the top. And uh, I had three soleus injuries in like three months. So I was getting PRP injections. I don't know whether you know what they are. Take blood out your your body, put it into a machine. So like your blood creates these certain cells, and then put the cells into like it'll be like red and white cells. So it'll turn them like so your blood comes out like a goldish color, and put it into the injury. So it creates scar tissue. So like the injury sort of speeds up a little bit, and like. They are good, but at the same time, they're dangerous because you think, oh, my injury's gone now. And then you go to running, like, fucking hell, it happened again. Mm. So, like, three three times I had a soleus in, like, three <coughs> months, so it was just so frustrating for me. At the time, I was looking for a place down there, so I was there for, like, six, eight weeks on my own, looking for a place. we just had the baby, and I didn't want the baby to come down and live out of a hotel, which I was doing. And uh, I was fucking, I was just fed up. It was around Christmas and that. And then, it's a mission away. Yeah, mm. it was quite. It was really hard, like to get home and and like lo- lovely place. And, that, and by the way, the club are fucking brilliant. I always look out for the scores and that for for them and the club and that, and still speak to quite a few of the fans. And then Tim Howard phoned me and was like, "I heard, I heard you're on a free in January. Like, do you want to come and play for us um, over in America?" And I always thought I'd go and play abroad, but never knew where. Thought my game was more suited to to abroad footy. And I thought, you know what, like, this is the chance, yeah. And I went over in the February. Memphis, that, so that's yeah. Memphis, and then... Yeah. So is that... It's USL, isn't it, or is yeah, it... Yeah, so it's USL. one below, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah one below. I went over there thinking I'll go there, rip it up and go to the MLS. That was my plan. Um, and I'm old, are you now? Sorry, Jose. I'm 29. Now, at this time, yeah. I was twen- about 27. Mm. Yeah. So I... Um, I went over there in the February, just turned, just turned twenty eight. It would have been. Um, so I went over there in the February, the day after my birthday. Flew out there, flew to New York, and then from New York to Memphis, and played like two preseason games, and then gets in the ice bath after the game, and Tim comes in because he was playing for us Tim Howard as well as being mm. like a part owner. And he said, uh, there's been a few people on, would you get your green card? Because the ML- a few MLS clubs are talking. I was thinking, right, this is yeah. it. And COVID happened in the March. Fucking hell. And then uh, didn't get to see my daughter for 11 months. So, like, the, the season sort of come to a standstill. We went into, like, teams of groups of four, like, local le- local areas, but local in fucking America yeah. is fucking six hours away. <laughs> so, uh, we just play in local teams, home and away, like, f- two times there, two times at our place, which still all right, but I would have liked to have had a full season where yeah, LA's and Miami's and, and you play all them teams and you travel, you get to see a bit of it and would have been nice to do that and then obviously see where it went. And potentially I probably would have went back over there and I come home and I put my arms out to my daughter and she just grabbed grabbed the mum and said, Mummy, is that my daddy? And it fucking broke me. It's like someone had just grabbed me out and just broke her in heart. It broke me, honestly. But at the same time, in the back of my mind, I was thinking, fucking, is, is that my daughter? Because she went from, like, a baby to a little mini girl mm. and was, like, not saying, like, daddy and that like, like she was saying sentences like mummy is that me daddy and like mm. looking at me a bit confused and all that and it took a couple of months for her to like warm to me a little bit and I thought I'll never ever ever leave you again and like I didn't want to leave her it was for her but like I thought you'd be coming over like for a month at a time like mm. three times out the year which wouldn't have been that bad and like I said she was coming in the start of April and COVID happened in the March Mate, it That's seems so like tough. again, like you've acknowledged yourself, mate. You have made mistakes, but it also seems like, mate, you've had a career of like bad luck as well yeah, in times. Yeah. And even, with, I mean, you, I know you, and if, I totally understand if you don't want to talk about it, but like your best mate, but you know, yeah, obviously passing yeah, away as well. Yeah, no doubt that's yeah. had an impact on you, and yeah, things have happened. And I just think, fucking hell, like it's like I, I've never ever drove me, and like that's a big part of it because I'm Michael, and like people always say, like. What, you don't drive, fucking grow up and all that, and I get what they're saying, but like, it scared me for a long time. Nah. Fear, yeah. Yeah. Um, and like, I don't know. Yeah, you could say sometimes it, 
Because they say, don't they? Like, I mean, like, you know, trauma that goes on in your life mm. and stuff, it can mm. it comes out yeah. in different ways, yeah. if you like, do you know what I mean? Whether yeah. it was the gambling or whatever, it's a, you don't mm. know, I guess, do you? Yeah. You know what the most interesting thing for me is, like, me not knowing you, mm. you look like you've had everything on a plate, like, yeah. you know, yeah. you had this contract with Everton, mm. you went about the leagues, then Everton mm. took you back, and then, yeah. do you know what I mean? You look yeah. on the surface like you've had a yeah. brilliant time, but the underbelly of it is not that simple yeah. at all do you know what I mean it's like a lot of heartache yeah. there yeah, yeah. Yeah. a lot yeah because you should essentially be in your prime now when yeah, you went yeah. to Memphis you should have been but your yeah. career is so front loaded yeah. when you were you know doing so much mm. so young yeah yeah it was, it was what I should be should have been in my prime uh, I feel like I should have played at a higher level for a lot longer and I get sent stuff all the time and it is nice to see but it does your head in like mm. I put it up on Instagram like top ten in two thousand. I was gonna mention this that. to you. Yeah. How and mad like, is that? You're in with Messi and Zlatans and and all that and like you said, a kid from Bootle and then guaranteed like World Cup prediction squad. I was a starter, mm. like stuff like that. So it is quite tough to take at times, but it's only it's only my own fault and and on art. I didn't grow up until last year, me. I really never. When I went to America, it was like my whole life was. 100 mile an hour and I got to America and I was on my own and it was like whew, I could breathe like mm. and a friend of mine Michael Reed who lived over there he played for the same team he was big into like writing stuff down and everything like that he's like a proper professional he brilliant brilliant lad and uh, he said like start writing stuff down about yourself and everything like that so I did and like I started reading it thinking what a fucking prick I was mm. like I was an absolute gobshite and like all I could read about was like negative stuff about myself I was like you know what like a lot of people are right and like it, it didn't it took me till last year mm. to grow up and like now I look at like nightclubs and think I would never step foot in them again mm. I look at fucking a, a Betty and like how do people walk in them and like it's like my mindset's totally changed like Mm. Uh, everything I, I want I just want to be the best coach I can be and want the best for my daughter and like that, that that's it like that's my life I think that's what kids kids develop with that don't yeah. they when you've had those moments oh. and you mm. think like I want to be the best yeah. dad I want to mm. because you're no longer the most important person in your life no, do, do you know no, what yeah. I mean like it's no longer the Josie Baxter show anymore like yeah. you know you've got a bigger sort of thing I'm so glad you said the writing down thing though because yeah. that mm. was for me as well like I went yeah. through a period of my life where I was pretty confused about yeah. things and I wrote down, and I've never made sense of any. I still do to this day. Yeah. Like, made this career from writing, but mm. like, if I'm ever confused, as soon as you pen it's the yeah, paper, yeah. because your yeah. your hand just goes, yeah, and yeah. You, you end up yeah. writing things that yeah. you probably weren't in yeah. there, mm. and it's just the the yeah. biggest form of clarity ever. It is, yeah. Mate, yeah. I looked at your um, I know again, you you kind of a bit sad maybe mm. when you think of what you could have achieved, but I looked at when you put out your retirement mm. Instagram post, mm. mate, the, the praise that you got on there mm. from the people, yeah. like. Who from the likes of Carragher to Fowler to the likes of like Connor Cody, Harry Maguire, Paul Scholes, Joe Hart, mm. you know, Dave Caldwell's like, you've yeah. like you've impacted a lot of mm. people's lives in the football yeah. and sporting world. Yeah. How, how does that make you feel when you got the likes of you know yeah. Carragher, Fowler, all these you know? Mm -hmm. It is surreal. I still I, I still pinch myself at stuff like that and like even Tim and that like Tim put me in his best ever five aside team and that and like it is it's it's touching like but uh, like I said sometimes it's it, it's lovely but then you think you stupid mm. bastard do you know what I mean yeah. but you can never look too far back I think because you'll never go forward and like mm. I was sort of relieved retiring people think like was you sad and like do you miss it and like although it's only been a short space of time it was more relief for me it was like that circle that bubble what I said at the start of the podcast that 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 bubble of that absolute Jose the footballer wanker is like gone out my life now. It's like I can be Joe, like mm. what my man that call me, like I can, I can be him now and like that 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 brave football face and that life and like it's gone. Mm. Like I, I'm a, a normal lad. That's all I ever was was a lad who could kick a bag of ball about a little bit better than other people. That mm. that, that that's it. Do you regret it, it or are you like sort of proud of who you are now? Proud, definitely proud of who I am now. Uh, that re really like other people won't see it because, like, I fucking, I, I live at Finch Farm. If there was a bed there, I, I'd happily put it there. I love it. Uh, work long hours. I stay and watch the kids and 
go in of a, of a morning and, and watch other coaches to try and learn and write sessions down and like I, I want to be the best and uh, so if I'm not doing that I've got my daughter so I, I literally don't move weekends I coach and on the other day I'll go and go the game um, I literally don't move so um, I am sort of proud of who I am now, mm. uh, where I wasn't of for the previous twenty eight years. It's really interesting, like mm. what you, how you are as a coach. Mm. If you would have been like that as a yeah. kid, like yeah. you know what you would have probably maximised yeah. more. But obviously, to to go on to your coaching now, mm. the positivity of it. What's your role with like Everton? Like so, I'm 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 an academy assistant. So from fourteen, fifteen, sixteens. Uh, Bainsy sort of went in with the 18s and I was in with the 23s for a large uh, portion and there's a recycle going on so I sort of like not not oversee but I just assist the other coaches so I'll I'll go in and say like you take the under 15s I'll just be there and I might put a passing drill on or a game at the end or a bit of like technique work with them and then any time we stop it to coach or a- any one of us can stop it to coach whatever we see and then over the weekend you'll say you'll assist the team and uh, there might be times where one of the one of the coaches is off or he goes and assists a different age group and then y- you then will take the whole group yourself and that's so all I'm at a learning stage where that that's what I'm doing uh, I haven't been doing it that long so I'm privileged to like be full time and do that there because there's a lot of good coaches who, who are there and who I can learn off so it's great. Is that the plan you think long term you'd like to stay in coaching? Yeah oh, definitely, I think it'd be yeah. a shame given mm-hmm. given your football knowledge and your experience yeah. I think you've obviously got a lot to offer. I think it's more of off yeah. the pitch experience you know like mm-hmm. yeah. I'm not sure if you can already see yourself in some kids that you're coaching yeah. like you think you yeah. know you've got a chance but for them kids to have you and say look I did yeah. this I mm-hmm. did this I met this person yeah. I agreed to this but I didn't write it down that's, that's yeah. invaluable I think. I uh, I I won't say the kid's name into unless, into unless like, un, sorry, unless, because I don't know whether if he, if he want to say it, uh, me to tell the story, but there was a lad who came into to Everton a few months ago, and I seen he wearing himself, I just noticed straight away, and like, I'm not saying I'm a psychologist, but like, I think given what I've been through, I have an understanding of who's happy and who's not, and uh, he walked in and I just said to him, what's up? And he went, not on him, all right. And I said, nah, what, what, what's up? Tell me. And uh, he said, have you got him in it? And I just knew then. I was like, yeah, I have. So we walked to the bottom pitches and we just both burst out crying. He had, like, traumatic news about one of his family members. And then uh, I was like, fucking, if you want to go home, you, you know, go home. I'll go and speak to, to the bigger boss and, and you can go home or do you, do you need anything from us or... It's like, no, I want to train and sort of... He, he was like probably what I said before, once you step foot on the training pitch, he, even though he didn't want to forget about that, it was it was a release. And uh, anyway, his family member's fine now and stuff, but like, I spotted it straight away and knew. Uh, and, and I think that's a little bit of something that through going through my stuff I can take into mm. me coaching because... I've spotted a few times and put my arm around lads and you're all right and yeah but like blah blah is happening and they tell you things and stuff and they don't really know um, what I've been through because some of them 15 and 16 mm. where they've been about fucking four when, when my mm. stuff was happening five so they don't know so that's what I'm trying to get better at that but also get better at the coaching and long term Short term, I just want to get better and and be the best version of coach of who I can be. But long term, like I want to be Everton's manager. I want to be Everton's first team manager. Yeah, that would that would be. Fun. I've just, that, that would literally just sort of say like mm. you you're going full cycle now, yeah. being back at Everton every day. But if you could do that, like yeah. and you know, there's no reason why you can't yeah. at all. But mm-hmm. it's an yeah. amazing story, mate. You know, um, you're saying about kind of being a bit of a mentor and stuff. Like, is is the gambling as big? of a problem in football as maybe it is in some parts of society yeah gambling in football is fucking through the roof yeah is it yeah it's so yeah. easy because I say this all the time yeah. because I am fairly involved with gambling mm. but gambling's not like having an alcohol addiction because if I've got an alcohol addiction I've got to sit and drink alcohol mm. do you know what mm. I mean I and, can you, say, and you look like yeah. you've been drinking yeah, I can yeah. say yeah. I could, if I had a gambling addiction I could say to my wife 
I'm just going to the toilet a minute, and yeah. then I could spend five grand. Like yeah, that, oh yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like that, yeah. and I think that is the, the yeah. issue because yeah. it's, you, and also you don't actually sometimes feel like it's gone anywhere because yeah. it's virtual money. It's yeah, not yeah. in your hand. Yeah, it's yeah, not, yeah. You don't That's have to pay worst, anybody. Yeah. It's the worst online, but like in terms, like we used to go to games and play fucking poker or um, like sort of trumps and all that. And like, it starts off with a pound. I don't know if you ever played trumps. Mm. So like, it starts off with a pound each. So like, there's five years, but you get five card each. And on the last card you turn over, if it's a diamond, you then look at your cards. You might have four diamonds and an ace or something else so realistically you don't want to you don't want to change any where you might have no diamonds and you either throw them all in and say you don't want none or you say change five or change none what, whatever you feel like so if I put the ace down and you've got that that suit you have to play that suit so if it goes out but then I've got four diamonds so I might win all five and the pot's only a fiver, but then you've got to pay the pot. You have, and you have, because I've won all five hands. So now the pot's 15 quid plus my pound, because I've won the fiver, and that's 16 quid. But next time, you might lose, and no one wins, because I won two, you won two, and you won one, but he won none, so he's doubling it, and it's 32 pound. Hmm. And listen, before you know it, sounds mad, it's a pound. But that starts going to like five, six tons and twelve tons and in fucking three hours you've got a game. But you you're just betting on the way to the game on the coach. And it is, it's not football is nuts. It's mad to think that, you know, you may could you could oh you made four or five grand. Yeah, that's and how you arrived. You you may you maybe yeah. might might not have got it. You're yeah. pissed off, you yeah. you've got to explain it to your missus yeah. and yet you're gonna to have to pass them the ball yeah, or you're gonna Yeah. To, yeah. Uh, a lot of stuff goes on, especially in teams where if if you've lost heavy on the coach and you've lost four grand, I'll say, just give us a grand, squash the other three. And like, hoping that like, if I ever done that, you do the same. Mm-hmm. So so that, that type of stuff happens, but like still, you're losing money on the way on the way to games. On the way to that. work. Yeah. I've heard the story a lad told me, obviously won't say his name, and he's playing down in the lower leagues and he's got a game like, yeah. he's playing in League One, League Two. And you know, you think people might maybe like me and you're yeah. betting on this team and he's up till five, six in the morning, spinning, fucking yeah. betting on, you know, fucking whatever greyhounds and what mm. roulette mm. and stuff. Mm. He said he's fucking knackered. He's had no sleep. He got yeah. a game to prepare prepare for. Yeah. And he's he's fucked. Yeah. Like and, and your people yeah, yeah. you yeah, yeah. people are supporting wanting him to yeah. win and yeah. he's fucking yeah. not had no yeah, sleep. Yeah, yeah, been there, done that, yeah. Yeah. It's mad, isn't Teddy, it? To think. Teddy, I'm glad you said before that, you know, the game's sort of introducing people where, you know, you've got guidance and stuff yeah. because I think a lot of it comes down to a bit of machoism, doesn't it? Because if you're on a yeah. coach with men yeah. and like you're you know, you're a young lad, you've got yeah. a bit of money, you who's gonna have the confidence to say, I'm gonna sit out, you know, mm. I mean, I'm gonna just mm. listen oh, to, the, mate. to me yeah. iPhone or something, whatever. Yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah. hard to do when like, oh, yeah. what do you mean you're not gonna play? That's why I said though, Judge, like I'm not just saying this, but the mate, the military and professional yeah. sports is so similar. Like mm. we didn't do it for money, we done it for like days and stuff yeah, we play yeah. spoof yeah. you'd have three coins in your hand yeah. but you do for like whoever loses has to get a tattoo yeah, or something yeah. stupid yeah. and you'd be like you didn't have a choice to say I'm not playing yeah. it was like you've fucking got to yeah, play yeah, yeah. and it was like it was like that big uh, macho yeah. thing and it's it so is. hard to be able to go at this and yeah. I'm going to bed <laughs> yeah well I remember playing poker once on the coach with the first team and we got back to the room eh? and it was me Royston Drenthe and Johnny Eitinger and we were in the room and I'd just started learning poker. I wasn't very good at it. And uh, they, they, he went all in and yeah, he had fucking whatever, how many grands in cash. And he went call. So like the pot now is fucking astronomical. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, well, none of these cards of mine match them. So I'm not going. So I went folding through them down and just seeing both of the faces got. And I had a straight and like I'd wiped the bolt of them oh, out. Oh lad. And uh, <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> because not none of my cards. The same match that. Yeah. And they were like, fucking hell, thank God for that. And I was like, what? And they were like, you would have won. I was like, can I take them back? <laughs> I didn't mean that. Yeah. And uh, 
We had a footy agent on, mate, uh, Stephen Beck told us mm. some mad stories about that trend, yeah. hey, mate. Like oh, house parties and stuff like that. I was in most of them. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I was. I really was. So, like, I fucking, no hands down what, what Royston was like, but he was, he was a fucking absolute nutter. He was talented, though, wasn't he? Scored yeah, oh, yeah. he played, played 22 mil or something around yeah. Madrid for him, and remember once he said he was ill, and uh, <laughs> he fucking, he come in, the Moisey had seen him on the cameras at like five in the morning, getting a taxi to Finch for some beer to get his fucking <laughs> to get his Lambo and bring his Lambo back to wherever he was going. And he phoned in that morning, sick. Um, he, he's done some fucking some stuff that like I wouldn't repeat that two years off camera. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. He's done yeah. some fucking not necessarily like the nuts. the he, you might not even like them or whatever. But who was like the most talented player? Yeah, I was going to ask that like, next. Just talented. raw talent. Because mm. you you of play, Wilshire was obviously around your age when Wilshire, he was yeah, captain of England. Me mm. and Wilshire, we mm. played centre mid together. Yeah, played against them all my life. Still speak to Jack a little bit. He's mm. had his problems of yeah. late and all life. Fucking diamond of a lad. Um, Outside of Everton and that, Jack, Jack, Jack would have been up there when mm. we went away with England. Uh, Jack was because when good. he broke in, it was like that, yeah. like yeah. the Barca performances, and yeah. that, that was something. Um, for me, I think Stephen Pina was frightening. You know, hmm. really, yeah. yeah. He's not a name I would have thought you would have said. Yeah, me Baines and Pina, my brothers are big yeah. blue. Yeah. My brother, honestly, yeah. Baines and Pina, he just yeah. loves that. So like natural talent in in terms of like I see like passion and fucking like Baines he could have went and played in any position and done a job type thing so like in terms of all round stuff like that I'd say Baines he was was, mm. was frightening his techniques were frightening but Stephen in like possessions and in games and that and like the way his body moved and keeping the ball and little tricks and that he was fucking mm. magic he was a magician honestly Um. And then in terms of cleverness and that, I think I I'm not just saying it because I've told you before how nice he is with me, but but Tim like for how small he was mm. and how many headers and goals and like I used to mark him and we used to play old V Young and I used to mark him in training and think like why is he pushing me two seconds before like a cross comes in when I was younger and yeah. then before you know he's got that yard on you and it, it's a goal and. We always used to play two touch, you know, where you, you, mm. where like you keep the ball up and you've only got two touch. And I'd like to say, like, I'd like to think that I hardly ever got beat, but I could never beat Tim. And like his touch was like Im- impeccable. He was very good. I remember, like, because obviously as a Liverpool fan, I remember round like when Tim Cale was there, mm. he was. There's not been many Everton yeah. players over the years where they've come yeah. to Anfield and you thought, do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, I he was one yeah. player you yeah, thought yeah. he can do something today. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And he did that in many yeah. plenty of games against Liverpool. Like. Mate, uh, I speak to. Uh, we've not actually met, but we speak a little bit on on social media. Mate, Adam Forshaw. Yeah, mate, yeah. He's, he's messaged and says, yeah. uh, "Tell him uh, sausage. That's why his fods that." Is that an old personal joke? Sorry about him. Uh, <laughs> fucking hilarious. Uh, don't know why they should say it, but it's anyway. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Loads of better than we can do. I took, I took, I took him out uh, to the news bar where my mate to. Sausage just shouldn't have been there. Uh, <laughs> sausage. Yeah, you, you call him sausage because you got a sausage head, but he's to say my fod's massive, but it, it is like so. Uh, and fucking all hell broke loose with this thing, and it was like it was like a cre- uh, a scene off a film. It was fucking insane, people slipping on blood and everything like that, and he was traumatized for fucking. <laughs> months after it and I thought like I felt so bad that I'd brought him out with me and like he had to witness that and like it was traumatising for me but like he was like sort of a lot posher than me he's well to do family and all that and I'm from Bootle where that stuff happens all the time <laughs> and uh, went into training the next day and I'm fucking almost sick he never turned up and said he was sick or something he would have been in bed rattled <laughs> yeah in bed rattled have a nightmare yeah we're gonna gonna try and get uh, Adam on mate when he's yeah. when he's over I'm on career Phenomenal. yeah um, we've gone over some of these mate but some of the questions we had in was um we kind of touched on it before. Paddy asked, uh, "Do you think footballers getting large contracts at such a young age impacts their hunger for the sport?" Um, nowadays, yeah, yeah, I do. Um, remember when I went back to Everton? We played City reserves, and the rumours were like three or four of their lads were on like twenty fives and twenty six grand a week. Now they won't touch a ball in professional football. Probably a couple of them. 
uh, like we beat them 3-0 and like you're thinking fucking hell like not that good no no and like it's, it's, it's the game's changing there's more money in the game mm. and you see like fucking at bang average players going for 40s 50s mm. and, and like it is it's the money's that big that that even parents and lads and that now think one contact and we're done we can sit back and relax and mm. it's sad um, greatest moment at the Blues um, after saying my debut yeah my debut yeah getting told I was starting and that and scary so we travelled down to West Brom and like you train so you travelled a few hours you have your you have your dinner so like bit belly full and then you've got to go into that analyst meeting where all the lights are off and it's just the projector on about the team tomorrow so already you're like fucking half asleep food coma yeah <laughs> so I'm thinking oh I can't really sneak a little five minutes at the back here because I won't need to listen to this <laughs> and then I heard uh, Jose and I fucking was like bang and he's like you'll start on the left I honestly think if I had my phone, I'd have rang my dad there and then and been like, why is he just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. dad play? <laughs> uh, but fucking, I'm one of them, me, where even if I'm staying on the first floor, I'll get the lift, but I fucking sprang up the stairs, got my phone and was like, dad, I'm starting. And yeah, surreal, one, two, one, and unbelievable. Awesome, mate. Um, kind of life goals we touch on, just get better in the coaching and move yeah, your way up. Yeah, yeah, get better as a coach. Um, Gradually keep getting better each day as a person, and you know, hopefully don't wanna, get there. Sorry, me, don't want to jump in, but I've got one that we forgot to talk yeah. about. You were past that Oldham team that beat Liverpool, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. in by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that must we have been on, like a. Yeah, we're on good run, so like, we uh, we we beat not far us away. Um, we beat beat Liverpool, got a draw with Everton, and then got them back to to Goodison. Um, and, and lost 2 or 3-1 I think um, and then further on with Chef U we went and beat like fucking West Ham away Villa away um, beat who else did we beat we beat Forest again and then we got Hull in a semi-final semi-final of a FA Cup as a League 1 team mm, like, it, it, it's unheard of really following year fast forward a year Carlin Cup semi-final against Tottenham Gets beat one nil, draws two all with them in extra time. Uh, went to extra time two all, so got knocked out, and that was semi final. Carlin Cup League One team, so like cup runs with lower league teams. Where mm. I was at, with very successful. What is that mo- momentum like? Because mm. I guess like you know some of the Premier League teams do disregard it a bit, but when you do, is there like a magic in that? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think fans and um, I think lower leagues more like work hard when your socks off, smash them if you get the chance and all that. Um, where some of the some of the Premier League players don't really like getting tackled and mm. don't like like a little elbow in the face before the ball comes in and stuff like that. Like get looked after, don't they? So mm. in, and there's a lot of cameras and that in in the Prem, but you know you volley each other from pillar <laughs> to post in the in the thing. So a lot of it is just just through that um, I forget what I was going to say then but yeah that, a lot of it is just through just mm. through literally what, what was it like as well scoring yeah. at Wembley yeah surreal it was yeah because um, I see you mate a lot of you look on some of your goals mate you've scored some absolute yeah, worldies yeah, yeah. you scored one yeah. in America yeah yeah that yeah, one's that, a belter yeah. yeah I did was lucky enough to score some really good goals like um, but the Wembley one was I think it was the first time Chef you had been to Wembley and scored. Well, I know it was, and it went, it was to go one nil up, and as I scored, it was like I turned round to like look at the because it was the whole end at the Chef, and it was like everything went slow motion. It was like they were just, they were jumping up and down like that, but like I was moving at a normal pace. Mm. It was it was weird really, um, but like fucking a a, a dream of mine. Uh, I always remember being in a. I was in the FA Cup final squad on the bench for Everton, and we lost. And after the game, I spoke to Gaza, and uh, he was sitting on the table because we had our end of season like do. And he said to me, "You know what, son?" He said, "You've done something today that I dreamt of my whole football and career. And it was to walk up Wembley stairs, and uh, and today, so that from so yeah. like he was a fucking idol of mine, mm. and I was like fucking hell, like." Career he had, and like he just wanted to walk up them stairs where I'd been today. 
So like my next goal then was I fucking wanna I wanna score that Wembley. So like I was was lucky enough to do it. Yeah. You've ticked a lot off, mate. Since, yeah. Like you know, considering you've retired at twenty nine, yeah. mm-hmm. you've ticked a lot off that a lot of people who've gone on and like you yeah. know the likes of Gaza never got to do. Yeah. yeah. Hey, one last one as well before we wrap up, mate. Um, I, at the moment, obviously you're involved in Everton now. What, mm. What's the kind of feeling we're in the club with Rafa now and stuff? I always say like, uh, anyone who, who likes football knows Rafa's a, a really good manager. If you if you are getting results. That's all fans want to see. They want to see success and results. And like the way they've started off, Everton season's been brilliant so mm. far. Mm. Um, speaking to the first team lads, they really like him. Uh, his attention to detail, spot on, and all that. And for me, it doesn't matter where you've been previous and all that. It's like like living the moment for now and stuff. And mm. you know, it, it, don't think for one minute because he's been at Liverpool, he's coming to Everton and sort of like taking like he'll have his own ambitions and and you know he loves the city. He's got got, got a house over the water. He's always like being a part of it. Does some really good stuff for charity and that. I mean, his wife. So like I I think. I think it's a really good appointment. I think mm. looking elsewhere, who could ever and I got, um, and he seems to be doing a, a good enough job now. So mm. like, like get behind him. Mm. Mate, that now she wanted to. No, mate, I've really enjoyed this. Honestly, yeah. I mean, you've been very, very honest, which mm. you know we were hoping for. And, yeah, mm. just um, good luck with all, obviously your coaching career and mm. you know your family and stuff. Thank you, appreciate yeah, it. Mate, I want to say, mate, you've. Um, Mate, what you've been through, I want to. You can be me because I, I know myself, mate. When I've fucked up in the past, yeah. and I've got regrets like everyone yeah, has. Yeah, and I yeah. think to you know to be to be man enough to own up to them. And, and like you say, you know, you you wear a wanker at times yeah, yeah, and stuff, yeah. mate. I think it, it takes a lot. And majority of time. <laughs> <laughs> no, mate. Anything else you wanna? No, touch no. Upon, thanks mate? for having me. Being a pleasure. I no. think a lot. I'll, I think a lot of people, mate, will take a lot from it, mate, because it's. Yeah. I think as well, what's come across to me is you can you can. You can kill yourself over things yeah. you've done. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I know just you obviously yeah. get a bit emotional at times mm. throughout this, and as you would, mate. But I love the, the idea now. It's right. Come on, yeah. let's look yeah, to the yeah. future now. Yeah, mm. definitely. That's what I would say. If there's anyone who does listen who feels like they're in that position, I'd definitely like reach out to myself or you who've been through bad times because you de- there's, there's definitely people out there who are not on their own. Like mm-hmm. they, you know, there's loads of people who, who who you can help, and it might have like sometimes it might have just been. A, a message of someone or someone who reached out to say how are you that like actually did lift me up so it, like it might be a reply or you know a little keep going you, you know mm-hmm. that that helps people Ross, Jose you're a star mate thank yeah, you so no much problem. thank you mate